So in the creation of your Tin Man, you may end up using a shape like this. And once again, we need to identify the shape and the way that we, we can see that it's a prism because the front and the back or the, the bases are the same shape and the same size. And we always identify prisms by their base. So this is called a triangular prism. Once again, that's distinguished by a pyramid, which would be this, you know, this would go into a point instead of same, same base, uh, top and bottom. So in order, if you were to take this shape and open it up, it would create um, a net that looks like this. So you can kind of see if I folded this up, I've got the three pieces, one, two, three, that fold into the triangle. And then this piece folds up and that piece folds up. Okay, so here's the net. So I'm going to draw that out. Little triangles on the side. Okay. Um, and so if you needed to, for example, we didn't have a lot of triangular prisms in our pile. So if you needed to make a triangular prism, just take a piece of cardstock fold it into three equal pieces. I'm going to fold it with just a little bit extra so you can kind of see that I've kind of folded into three and then I have this little extra piece that I'm going to fold over. And This is going to be what I use to glue. So when I open it up, I've got three equal pieces and then this little tab. And so when I do it, I can use that little tab to kind of connect and so there you can see the triangular prism and then you could just if you needed that piece to be covered you can but some of the pieces will be uh, connecting with something so then I wouldn't actually need to make a triangle for that piece just for that one other side so um, I've gone ahead and I've measured the sides um, oh first off the bases once again we identified were triangles um, the faces of this one happen to be a square but some of the ones you may be using might be rectangles. And then I took the measurements of this. So, and once again, it's a lot easier if you're constructing it to do it when it's flat to get the measurements. So from here to here is four centimeters. So this is a square. So this is also going to be four centimeters. And I'm going to put them directly on my shape. So I have four centimeters four centimeters. I could also put them here on my shape as well. That would be helpful. Four centimeters, four centimeters. And then the one piece that I'm going to need is that I'm, when I'm calculating the area, I can see that I have two basic shapes. I have triangles. And so I'm going to write the formula for the area of a triangle. So the area, and once again, we're measuring in centimeters. This will make um, your calculations a lot easier. Um, so your, the area formula for a triangle is um, one half base times height, or some people write it as base times height divided by two. Either one is totally fine. And then I'm going to plug in my values. So once again, I am going to, you can calculate. So this here is four. You can actually use the Pythagorean theorem. This, um, well, we have to measure it anyway, so you might as well just actually measure the height. So this one's 3.5. Once again, I'm going from the top down there. So this is 3.5 centimeters. So I'm going to put that in there. So that's 3.5 centimeters. So plugging in my values, I get one half the base, okay, which we said is four. I'm putting the values in both places just so you can see it. So 4 times 3.5. So half of 4 is 2, and 2 times 3.5 is 7. And once again, it's centimeters times centimeters, so centimeters squared. And then the area of the square area is length times width or for a square, just side squared. Once again, the side is four times four, so we get 16 
centimeter squared, and then I'm going to look at all the pieces. So the surface area, SA, surface area in total, I had a triangle, which was 7, and another triangle, which was 7, and 3 squares, or 3 times 16. And then when I add that all up together, I get 62 centimeters squared. So once again, if you're, if you're making this, um, you may not need all the pieces. For example, let's say you're, this is your triangle, and as I said, you might be calculating the surface area of these three pieces and one triangle because this might be connected with something. So you're going to have to kind of make allowances for that here um, when you're doing your calculation. Now, when you're doing the volume, once again, this is a prism, and we can always go back to the general formula for a prism. So volume equals base times height. The base, once again, is a triangle. So we're going to plug in the area formula. Okay, so the base is a triangle. So we're going to plug in the area formula for a triangle. One half base times height. And it gets a little weird because we've got this height, which is here, and then you've got really kind of this, this length. Um, it's kind of h in the formula, but this is it's referring to this piece there. Because this is a square, it's the same value, but it's not always going to be, so be careful about that. Uh, 1 half base 4 times the height of the triangle, 3.5, times the height. Oopsie, which is 4. And once again, you know, we already calculated this, so you could have I mean, it's, I wanted to see the, what values you're plugging in, but we already calculated 7 times 4. So the volume is 28 cubic centimeters. So in that little shape here, you could stick 28 cubic centimeters in this little thing. Okay, so good luck. I'm looking forward to seeing your little Tin Man projects.